evaluate the following using spherical coordinates. So we have the triple integral over d of 16z dv, where d is the solid region bounded by the sphere above the xy plane. And so here we're given the sketch of our region, our solid region d, so we can see that it is bounded above by our sphere of radius 1, so that's x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 1. And keeping in mind that we know we want to use spherical coordinates here, this is equivalent to rho squared being equal to 1. And that this region also is being bounded below by the xy plane. Which we can define as z is equal to 0. So this region that we've shaded red at the base can also be thought of as that two-dimensional region R. So we'll use this solid region here to help us find the bounds. So we need the bounds on rho, phi, and theta. So let's find our rho bounds first. Remember rho is the radius of the sphere. So since we know from our bounding curves that rho squared is equal to 1, and that rho must be positive, so greater than or equal to 0, we can say that therefore the bounds on rho, rho must be greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 1. Because that is the radius of our sphere. And now again, when we go ahead and we go and find the phi bounds, we want to keep in mind that phi is restricted to the z-axis. And looking at our solid region here, we can see that z is being restricted to the positive values that are above the xy plane. So we can say that since z must be greater than or equal to 0, this lets us know that phi must be greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to pi over 2. And then last but not least, to find the theta bounds, we think about the two-dimensional region R in the xy plane, or the solid's projection into the xy plane. So again, we're looking back at our three-dimensional region here and thinking about the projection into the xy plane. So since R in R2 is a complete circle, or a full circle, this lets us know that theta can be greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi, a complete circle. And so we have our three bounds. We have the bounds for rho, we have the bounds for phi, and we have the bounds for theta. So the last thing that we need to do to prepare is rewrite the function. Or rewrite the integrand in terms of rho theta phi. And so we're given here f of x, y, z is equal to 16z. And we'll make a little love note here to ourselves. We know that since z in spherical coordinates is defined as rho cosine of phi, this lets us know that our function in terms of rho theta phi will be defined as 16 rho cosine of phi. And so we have everything that we need here. We're ready to go ahead and set up the triple integral in spherical coordinates and evaluate. And again, we were given the general triple integral over d of 16z dv. So I'm going to let my outer bounds be theta, which are 0 to 2 pi. The middle integral is phi, which was from 0 to pi over 2. And the inner integral will be rho from 0 to 1. And this is 16 rho cosine of phi. And then don't forget with our differential here, this is rho squared sine of phi 
d rho, d phi, d theta. And so we can simplify this before we start evaluating. This is the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to pi by 2, the integral from 0 to 1 of 16, cosine of phi, sine of phi. We have rho cubed d rho d phi d theta. And we're ready to get going. So we want to start by evaluating our inner integral. So I'm going to pull this out. And we are evaluating the inner integral, which is with respect to rho. So we have the integral from 0 to 1 of 16 sine of phi, cosine of phi, rho cubed, d rho. And so sine of phi and cosine of phi are held constant here. So this is 16 sine of phi, cosine of phi, and we're just integrating rho. So this will be rho to the fourth by 4, which we can evaluate from 0 to 1. We, of course, know that 4 goes into 16 four times. And so this is leaving us with 4 sine of phi, cosine of phi. And we have 1 to the fourth is 1 minus 0, which is simply just 4 sine of phi, cosine of phi. And so we are ready now to take this and evaluate the middle integral. And our middle integral here is with respect to phi. So this will be the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 4 sine of phi, cosine of phi, d phi. And so we have two options here. We might be able to use u substitution, but that's too much work. We see that this is a beautiful setup for a double angle. We can rewrite this if I factor 1, 2 out in front. I have 2 times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of 2 sine of phi, cos of phi, d phi. And that is our double angle formula. This leaves us with 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine of 2 phi, d phi. And now this is just a general antiderivative. So this becomes minus 2 cosine of 2 phi divided by 2 from 0 to pi over 2. And so our 2s cancel each other out. And we're ready to evaluate. So I have minus, so this will be cosine of 2 times pi by 2, this simplifies to cosine of just pi, minus cosine of 0. So cosine of pi is negative 1, cosine of 0 is 1. So I have minus a minus 2, which leaves us with positive 2. And so we can now take this and evaluate the outer integral. Woohoo! And our outer integral here is with respect to theta. So our last integral is from 0 to 2 pi of 2 d theta, which is just 2 theta from 0 to 2 pi, which leaves us with a beautiful final answer of 4 pi.